lady ballers. Not something you really ever want to hear or have to think about, and frankly, that's pretty understandable. The question when it comes to these immediately obviously transphobic movies or TV shows designed not as a reflection of the audience norms of the time, but as a politically motivated realisation of a specific ideological stance is what can you say about it? Plenty of people have already done breakdowns of the transphobia, like Dead Domain or Samantha Lux or Jose. People have done breakdowns of the film quality of the movie, like Some More News. Which leaves the question of what else is there left to say? The fact that you are hearing this paragraph means that there was at least one last thing to mention about it, I guess that I felt was worth my time, was worth watching this film that I totally legally procured and will be analysing under fair use laws, Daily Wire and Jeremy Boring if you're watching this alright. Don't copyright claim me, this is all perfectly okay. What I want to talk about is a specific storyline within the film Lady Ballers, following one specific character from the bunch that a few other videos have touched upon, but didn't really put any effort into exploring what exactly this character came across like. I am of course talking about Alex Cruz, played by Daniel Considine, a person who isn't really a real actor, he only truly appears in Daily Wire produced things, all of which you can get a far better breakdown of in the Some More News video, so go watch that first. Here, on this channel, in this video, we're going to talk about how Alex's arc within the film is a weirdly accurate representation of a certain kind of trans person, and does in fact showcase the very real ways that trans people within specific circles are treated by those they see as their friends. I let, I let you speak. The best thing you can do for us is I grow out your mustache and tell people not to live like you. I call it the secret trans story of lady ballers because, well, because it's clickbaity. But it's also pretty true to how I felt about it at the end of my time watching this garbage trash fire of a film. Oh, and before we get into it, I want to mention today's sponsor, Ground News. That's right. You can go right now to ground.news slash Lily Simpson to get yourself a sweet deal on a truly pretty great resource. If you ever find yourself wondering about a news story, and then wondering about who is reporting on that news story, a continually worrying thing in the modern polarised media landscape, then Ground News is a great source for alleviating that. They offer the ability to see how many articles have been published on a story, what the bias for those stories are with ratings from three independent news monitoring organisations, compare the headlines of those stories to see how people position it differently based on those political biases, and also get the info on how factual these various news sites actually are. All of which allows you to temper your consumption of news with stats and data. I love stats and data. They also have categories for you to go digging for any news that might have skipped your notice within whatever interests you, like movies and TV, my personal special interest, as you might have been able to guess from the whole YouTube channel. They even have a blind spot feed, which lets you see what stories you might be missing based on the political aisles you belong to, giving you the info on how under or overrepresented each is within the right or left. And for a personal news story, if we look up the Daily Wire just to see what is happening at the company behind all of today's topic, 
then we find out that they are apparently getting rid of Candace Owens, with 52 sources on that. This has reporting from across the political divide, with a distribution bias leaning more right-wing by a little bit, and at least a quarter of the sources have a high factuality. It also seems, from looking at headlines both on the right and left of the reporting media, that she was fired for going really hard on anti-Semitic stuff. Though two headlines stood out to me as interesting, specifically this one from The Gateway Pundit, which said Candace Owens confirms she is no longer working for Trump-hating Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire, and this Hollywood Reporter headline, which says that Candace Owens is out after fighting with co-founder over Israel-Hamas war. Yes, it seems like this is one of those cases where we get the interesting crossover of right-wing that supports Zionism and right-wing that hates the Jewish people, clashing in the form of this pundit and her relation with her bosses through a well, anti-Semitic perspective. Regardless, if you sign up to Ground News at ground.news slash Lily Simpson, you too can get to experience all the fun of seeing stories through the lens of who is reporting on them. And if you do it now, you will get 40% off unlimited access all of this month, which is a pretty solid deal. So head on over to the QR code on the screen or the link below and sign up today. All right, I reckon that all amounts to an intro of sorts, so let's get into the meat of this video and talk about Alex's story from the film whose highest achievement is that it exists. Lady Ballers. <laughs> Skipping past all of the redundant stuff, we get to the locker rooms after a big game, where the very masculine and aggressively so team mistreats their laundry boy because, well, because they're jocks and he is like a little guy. And basic stereotypes are the meat that people go to when they don't have anything interesting to do with characters. However, our character, Alex, is the only one of the group who doesn't mistreat the basketball butler. I'm not a sports person, I don't know what job this person is meant to be, but Alex shows care and respect to them, stuff that is meant to hint towards some things of relevance down the line, and that are all part of the character that they are building for Alex, i.e. effeminate. Okay, don't worry about that. Because, yeah, treating others with respect is women shit, I guess. We all know that guys are meant to be terrible and selfish people. Look, I promised I wouldn't get into the wider politics that this movie represents, but I mean, that's a hard promise to keep with what we are dealing with here. What does it take to be a man? Is it money? Fame? Respect? Maybe. You have to win. Because it is strange what exactly Lady Ballers is trying to say narratively with the characters and their storylines. Like, not to jump ahead too much here, but basically, nobody in the film learns anything, or goes anywhere with their arcs other than Alex, and we're gonna get to that later. They mostly end where they started, and along the way, all we learn is that queer people and women suck. Driving, parking, most of the stem fields, rock and roll. Yeah, boys are better at all of those things. Oh, and while we're here, the pacing of this film is atrocious. Scenes go on way longer than they need to, like, these ones, for example. It's Felix. You see what I mean? Cut. Cut. And while we are already well off the trans story that I wanted to talk about, the meta-narrative is a bit tired here. Like, it reminds me a lot of those atrocious, not-another-something movie series from the 2000s, like, this is not another woke sports movie, which is meant to be a criticism because those films wore their parody on the sleeves so hard that it just kinda ended up not being funny. Like, the jokes were more just them repeating what happened in those films and then pointing at it and going, 
well, that sure happens a lot in those films, or did happen a lot in those films, am I right? Huh, a bit silly, in it. You think I'm like one of those coaches on TV who can just give a speech and change the fates of every young man? Okay, okay, look, back to the character of Alex, thank God. And we have skipped forward many, many years now. As the coach guy, played by the Mr. Boring, the CEO of the Daily Wire, and that's not a pun, his last name is actually Boring, well, he is looking for a job right now. This will ultimately turn into him tracking down the members of his old team with the intention of, in the long film term, of getting them to perform in women's sports so they can win a bunch and regain money and fame and glory in the new leftist world where you can get away with that kind of bullshit, am I right? Despite, as Ben Shapiro literally tells us, the fact that this film was intended to be a documentary and then wasn't because they found out they could only get away with this in fictional land. You guys should like go try out for a bunch of ladies leagues and that became not possible because as it turns out, most ladies leagues don't allow in actual men. But all of this is just Daily Wire real life fanfic at this point, which is functionally no different to the rest of the stuff that they make to be fair, so... Keep on trucking, guys. Well, anyway, Mr. Coach Guy finds Alex working at a restaurant in drag with the name tag Alexa, a restaurant that seems to actually be a drag restaurant. A fact that the film presents with this music and this slow-mo that I have to assume was meant to clue us into seeing this with the same level of outrage and disgust that conservatives have towards drag culture, but that if you didn't know the politics of the people involved, doesn't all of this seem like not that big a deal? The only person who seems like they have even the slightest bit of a problem is the coach guy being surprised by Alex being here. Alex? And trust me, this is a theme that will play some part into my larger point at the end, so remember that. Remember the fact that nobody else appears to be giving a shit about this drag restaurant except for the coach, who we kind of already see as an asshole. We cut to the next scene at a bar, after the coach has had to work at this restaurant with the two of the guys decrying what they have to do to get by these days as men. Yeah, wow, really suffering, I guess, Oof, having to dress up and drag to get a job. And they do a whole joke about how the coach says that getting trep like he did makes him appreciate the way he interacts with women a lot more. The handsiness of guys making him reconsider his own actions right before he just slaps the waitress on the ass. Well, it makes you think about how you treat women. Thanks, babe. <sighs> See, this is part of the wider problem that I mentioned just beforehand. These characters keep doing this shit throughout the whole film. They keep pointing towards things that them learning would be a good idea to learn, keep showing the sort of lessons about I don't know, respecting women that other previous gender swap, gender bend media has done, but then they don't do it. So the douchebag misogynist coach remains a douchebag misogynist coach all the way to the end, but still gets presented as the hero for some reason. Winners are just losers who win. There he is. It's frankly just basic narrative structuring. And it's one that they look at and then ignore. The coach character literally talks in this scene about how the world changed and they stayed the same, with it unironically supposed to be about how that's a bad thing. Nothing happened to me. I stayed the same and the world changed. One day it's all about winning, the next day they want you to lead from behind. Regardless, we learn that Alex went into acting after school because people supported him, and that gave him the false hope of trying what he wanted to try. Like, that's a bad thing, I guess? Everyone always told me I could do anything I wanted. What does any kid who can choose anything in the world do? Mm. Actor. Actor. Anyway, it's just a setup for the coach to call Alex a homo, though. 
because the hall actors are gay as we know, it is the fag sport after all, which in itself is just a setup for Alex to tell us that he is straight and that's why he failed to get into acting. Because Hollywood doesn't want a straight white cis male. No, no, ignore that. Ignore all of that, okay? And that one. And that one. Look, it's Daily Wire fanfic, all right? It doesn't need to be rooted in reality or truth. Turns out white male of non-exotic sexuality is the only ethnic group not being cast by Hollywood these days. Alex then races around the block to prove to the coach how fast he is. Because the coach has a plan where Alex can enter a race to get $5,000. And we get a moment from Alex here that I think does speak to that later development. Where he talks about how it would be nice to be a winner again to have a clear purpose, and to know who you are. I mean, it's very obvious that Alex is floundering in life a bit here. He hasn't really worked out who he is, and the drag restaurant, while it's okay for money, certainly isn't what he is. He doesn't want to be a guy wearing a dress. No. As we find out later on, I think he wants to be a girl wearing a dress, and not just pretending to be a woman for work. We also get another moment here, where a group who are freaked out by Alex running says this. We are definitely homeschooling. And like, what does that mean? Apart from the Daily Wire trying to force another political agenda into the film. Like, you guys are in an alley out of the back of a bar, surrounded by adults. What triggered this outburst about public schooling from this guy and better yet, why did he use we rather than I? Like, are both of the people here with him part of his bisexual polycule? I have so many questions, but all we get is that punchline with zero setup and zero punch. Just a line, really. We are definitely homeschooling. Then a cowboy who wants to have a threesome with the coach and Alex, because he thinks they are, I guess, cross-dressing sex workers, persistently hunts them down as they run away, which is all part of a gay people are weird and probably rapist freaks joke that Lady Ballers is doing its best to really push on us. How much? I see it. How much? It's hard to be offended by anything that happens here, because it's all wrapped up in that incredibly shit pacing I mentioned earlier on, which distracts quite heavily with all the long fucking pauses. I can't even notice the homophobia between this crap editing. We now jump to the register event for the race, because Lady Ballers just straight up skips the training montage that they sort of hinted at. The real crime of the film here if you think about it. The coach and Alex hit the first roadblock of the registry lady, who is wearing an impressive amount of trans and queer pins. I'm sorry sir, the men's events are awful. I mean, they look cool as shit, but I get that they're meant to be scary and whoa. The register lady tases the coach guy because he refuses to move from the queue, despite the registry lady telling him that the men's race is full and that he is too late. Pretty funny actually watching Jeremy Boring get tased, I wish that more often. <laughs> At the last moment though, Alex turns up in his wig from the drag restaurant, and this register lady realises that Oh no, this is a trans woman, not a man, and therefore she needs to be able to race. Alex doesn't want to do this. It seems clear that he's about to clear this mistake all up, but the coach guy, who is really malevolent in multiple different ways, leaps on this chance to get Alex into any race, seeing it as just an opportunity to make money. Seriously. That's how this whole story gets started, and why I wanted to talk about all of this was because it sets us up to see that Alex kinda falls into pretending to be a trans woman at the insistence and forcefulness of the real villain of the film, its main character. Hey. 
We're just glad we were able to get this worked out without having to get social media involved. Like, that's not me reading too hard into what the movie is telling us. If you went into this with the view that it was a horror story about a bitter, jaded old man abusing a minority community to make money and to feel like a winner again, dragging all his old students into his scheme by manipulating them and bullying them, you would have a very different view on how things play out from this point, and you would also be accurately describing how the coach gets shown by lady ballers. I'm not gonna compete against women. Are you crazy? Do you have any idea how much faster even a man past his prime like you is than a female athlete? Alex is very much against racing. He says how this is wrong. He says how he has a penis and that means he can't be a woman, which the coach then uses the gender education that his daughter got and passed on to the coach to twist Alex into doing the race anyways. Even getting physically abusive with him. This is wrong. <laughs> We wear a dress every freaking day. The coach tells Alex that he can be the best lady he can be, uses a motivational speech to circumvent the fact that Alex doesn't feel comfortable doing this, and right here, right in this moment, is a fundamental building block in the secret trans story of Alex that we are watching here. Because you see, once we get past the Alex winning a bunch of events, and the plotline around cancel culture, and the evil turf journalist who wants to exploit trans people in sports to get clicks, who is so blatantly evil that I'm convinced they were invented specifically so that we would have someone who the coach looks great next to, despite the fact that both of them are basically the same character. You are not a woman. But you just did that entire story. To make a name for myself? To get clicks? To gain power? We get to see past all of this that this whole experience is drawing some stuff out of Alex. Like how he actually kind of enjoys working at the drag restaurant place, even though he has a corporate sponsorship from Bud Light now. You get the joke they were going for there, you know, remember how conservatives are obsessed with Dylan Mulvaney in a kind of unhealthy manner that they haven't dropped it even now a year later? Nearly an average of once a day for the entire year. There was no month in which her name went unspoken. How Alex seems to be super, super into understanding a very specific stereotype of a woman in a way which indicates an element of obsession with the identity from beforehand, if not necessarily a healthy or positive interpretation of womanhood. Just shave your legs, tell each other how brave you are for things that require absolutely no physical courage, and don't be afraid to cry at work. And Alex even discusses on a live TV broadcast all the stuff that we got hinted at earlier. How he clearly struggled to find identity while being told by everybody else what to do or what he should be. That pretending to be a trans woman while part of the Lady Ballers and having people actually accept him as a woman has helped him to figure out what he does feel like internally. Everyone else on that broadcast is just reading scripted lines that are designed by the coach and the reporter, but Alex is digging deep into some emotional breakthrough. And I guess if I'm really being honest, I've never completely known myself or been known until now. Something which the film agrees with me on, even if we come to different conclusions about it, because I support trans people and their transitioning from whatever place it might come, and Lady Ballers is made by a bunch of transphobic fucks. Technical, and you shut the f up, transphobic motherfucker. Still can't believe they wouldn't let Ben Shapiro really swear. Legitimately, after that scene, the coach approaches Alex and confronts him about the waterworks of that moment. And Alex tells us that this whole experience has opened up the world for him that it has allowed him to exist in a way that he, or should I be saying she, has never really had the opportunity to in the past. All of which clearly seems to be worrying for the coach and leads perfectly into our final scene. I feel like a brand new woman. Brand new man. What? 
The one in which Alex makes it clear that she is a trans woman and that she is coming out. Right at the end, when the jig is already up for Lady Ballers and the bottom of the coach's scam has finally fallen through. In what is a really hard monologue, obviously, for Alex to say, she tells the coach, this authority figure in her life who has been instrumental in getting her here, and who has also been hugely influential for her in high school. I mean, this coach is almost like a father figure. Well, she tells him that she is a woman, that after decades of trying to be someone and never really feeling like herself, this whole Lady Ballers thing has been the trigger needed for her to find that out. I am a woman. I mean, all those years playing basketball, I never really felt like myself. She is proud of herself for the first time ever, and all of this is said into the expressionless, cold face and eyes of the coach, who immediately shuts it down by telling Alex that she is confused, that this is wrong, and that she needs to get help, calling her a lost man in a lost world with shitty parents, all of whom went along with the lie of pretending that Alex could be a woman. You're just a lost man in a lost world with shitty parents and a real shitty coach. You've all gone along with this lie instead of just hurting your feelings. Then, when Alex, who looks so close to breaking down, pushes back even a little bit against this patriarchal figure, this representation of the conservative man, the coach proceeds to punch her in the groin to prove the point before sending a message to a mysterious someone telling them that he needs their help. <laughs> And it turns out that the help the coach was going for, in a post credit scene that is also really important to this secretly depressing real trans story in many ways, was in fact Jordan Peterson, who is here to try and fix Alex out of their transness. Convert her back to cis, if you will. Some kind of cis conversion camp. And that's the end of the story. Jessica broke up with me and I... I had a good cry. And you shut the f up, transphobic motherfucker! Now, you see all the elements laid out before us, or at least I hope you do, but let's do the work of putting this together to explain what I mean when I say that this is a very tragic and very real trans story at the heart of this shitty, bigoted, boring comedy. Alex is very clearly, from the plot of the film, someone who actually is a trans woman or at least identifies as such. She has many elements that speak towards things that are recognisable in eggs from the trans community. Eggs being those trans people who have not come out yet, or who are still closeted. And while the way that Alex found of expressing herself, the things about femininity that she hyperfixated on, are not necessarily the most positive nor the most feminist view of women in the world, they do reflect the kind of thing that a person raised in a right-wing area and surrounded by right-wing conservative friends would pick up and internalize as being what it is to be a woman. And don't be afraid to cry at work. Yeah, boys are better at all of those things. It's only through the experiences that Alex is forced into by pure circumstance that she even gets a chance at exploring this side of herself and her identity. Because, I mean, otherwise, she would get attacked and mocked by her friends for it, like she does when she tries to explain to one of them that she actually is a trans woman. You gotta believe me when I tell you this. You are not a woman. And despite the fact that at the end of this film, Alex goes back into the closet and goes to Jordan Peterson of all people to try and be fixed at the insistence of the coach, that doesn't mean that she isn't a trans woman like a few other reviewers of Lady Balls accepted in their conclusions. Honestly, if you went along with that, you're going along with one of the more transphobic things that Lady Ballers does here. 
Because you're agreeing that if a trans woman isn't able to come out of the closet, or is forced by friends and family and society to detransition or never transition in the first place, then I guess they're just not trans. Which flat out isn't true. Who knows how many trans people out there in the wrong places and surrounded by the wrong people are forced to keep that part of themselves hidden, who maybe share similarities with what we see here from Alex in their own personal lives. And this is only an interpretation that I think really holds water if you go into the film with the non-political perspective that the Daily Wire tried to suggest that they're playing towards. Complete bullshit, obviously, but they did claim it. And in that case, if you do that, you would see the coach as this terrible human being who mistreats his friends and lies to people and hurts those around him in the name of winning, who is angry and aggressive towards a world that appears to be leaving him behind. I hear Disney's gonna make the new Snow White a neurodivergent lesbian. I don't understand the world. Wasn't that long ago we were champions. Winners. You would see the coach as not a reliable source of information, as not a reliable moral centre, and in that perception, wouldn't you see the way that he treats Alex as cruel? As denying this friend who is opening up to him for the first time in ever? and immediately shutting it down in a way that is emotionally and physically violent. How can you be so sure I'm not a woman? <laughs> if you don't already agree that trans people are not real and bad, then watching Lady Ballers would seem more like that comedy horror story of an evil coach and the trans woman that he abused, manipulated, and then abandoned to suit his whims and his own personal beliefs. Alex is a victim of both systemic and individual bigotry that keeps her locked in place as something she does not want to be, and that's a dark and tragic way to end the story if not a completely unrealistic representation of what right-wing figures are doing to trans people in the states and areas that demonize, attack, and defund trans lives. And just a quick one here for the writers from the Daily Wire who maybe, maybe put a little bit too much of themselves into Alex's story. If any of you do feel like Alex does, do see yourself in the same place. I get it. It's scary being surrounded by people and an institution who will abandon you for those feelings and for who you think you might be. But there are people out there who will not nut tap you and send you to Jordan Peterson. People who care about your identity and not just you conforming to their version of how they see you. And staying in the closet forever just to keep your job and your friends is something that will eventually kill you. I hope that if you do exist behind this media, that you're able to find a solution that works for you, and just know that the community is here, and will accept you despite your political beliefs. We might not like you, like Blair White and Caitlyn Jenner, but we won't deny you, you. And there you go. There is the hidden trans arc at the centre of this comedy. One that was certainly not intended to be taken the way that I have by the Daily Wire, but by pure virtue of the way that they fucked up the narrative and the characters, it very much lets you do it the way that I have done it. It very much lets you, if you put politics aside, see it as a rough trans storyline about a trans character in a dire place which ends very negatively. I hope that what I said was convincing, or interesting, or at least entertaining if nothing else. And if you liked what I said here, then you can share, comment, subscribe, and check out more stuff that I make for things like this. If you also have any media that you want me to dive into, then please feel free to chuck that down there, and I'll see if I can add it to the long list of representation, or semi-representation, or kind of representation, that I am working my way towards finishing. Many of them are pieces of trans history that nobody else has talked about or will talk about. Oftentimes, for perhaps good monetary reasons, it's 
not exactly financially demanded by the algorithm to go over the trans episodes of obscure shows, but if at least one person watches and cares about it, then I think that makes it worthwhile to remember slash discuss. If you really like what I've done and want to support me continuing to make this stuff, and the best way to do that is by going to my Patreon and subscribing, or here on YouTube. Those in the $5 and up category should be scrolling past the screen right now, and I really do appreciate everyone on there for helping me to make this channel and keep it going. That money goes towards rent, food, power, internet, and other bills, all of which are not being covered by big business daddies like the Daily Wire. It's just little old me on this end, and so any financial support goes a long way towards letting me focus on making these videos and putting in the kind of effort and time that I feel is needed for them to be good. Other than all of that, thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have a great day.